Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today's video is going to be about interest capitalization. This is one of the more complicated topics in accounting, so I'm going to split this up. This first video is going to be a short introduction to what interest capitalization is, and then the next video is going to go through an example. And as I always tell my students, the devil is in the details. So the concept of interest capitalization is fairly easy, but the implementation is sometimes fairly complicated. Okay, so let's recall what, how we decide the cost of an asset. Okay, here is our rule. Cost of an asset, so if we're looking at, for example, property, plant, and equipment assets, includes all reasonable expenditures to acquire the asset and prepare it for its intended use. So everything that you have to pay to get the asset, get it to your place of business and get it ready to use. Okay. So one of those costs includes interest. So in other words, you're paying, you're borrowing money in order to complete a very long-term project and that interest is included as part of the cost of your asset. Okay, so what are we doing? Basically, instead of recording the interest as interest expense, like we usually do, we are going to add the interest to the cost of the asset. Okay, so, oops, sorry. So um, we're not gonna debit interest expense. We're gonna debit whatever the asset is, all right? So we're including the interest as part of the cost of the asset. Okay, so what kinds of assets are we talking about? There's two kinds of assets. One would be assets that are constructed for a company's own use. The other one is assets constructed as discrete projects for sale or lease. So think about this. Um, we're, we're paying interest to borrow money to complete an asset. So this is not inventory that you're um, creating, you know, thousands and hundreds and thousands and millions of in a year. This is something that's going to take some time to complete. Okay. So could be an asset that they're building for themselves, or it could be an asset that they're building for a customer. Okay. So what we want to look at the period of capitalization. So what length of time are we going to use for capitalization. So the, this period begins when construction starts. Um, and so three things have to happen. So I say, remember A, E, and I. So A means activities. So that means construction has started. Activities have started. Expenditures, E is expenditures. Expenditures have been made on the asset. And finally, interest costs are being incurred. Okay, so you need A, E, and I in order to start capitalizing and you finish capitalizing when construction is complete. If you have a project that's more than a year, then you're going to calculate the capitalized interest for each year. So it could be if your project is still going on, you're going to end at the end of that year and then next year you're going to, com you're going to um, calculate some more interest. Okay. All right. Now <clears throat> I'm going to show you a flow chart. Um, with interest rates. Now, let me actually, I'm going to, I'm going to go backwards here. Let me, let me go here first. Let's talk about interest. How do we usually calculate simple interest? Okay. This is very easy, right? Usually our simple interest is principal, the amount you borrowed times rate, which is the annual interest rate times time, which is the part of a year. And that gives you your interest. Now, when we're doing interest capitalization, it's kind of like we're doing the same thing, but we're doing it in a different way. So try to remember that when you're capitalizing interest, you're taking the principal times the time, and that's going to give you something called weighted average accumulated expenditures. We're going to see those in our example. And then you multiply the weighted average accumulated expenditures times one or more interest rates in order to get your interest. Okay, so let's go through that again. So we're going to take our principal times our time, and the time is going to be a fraction of a year. We're going to add all those up. That's going to give us our weighted average accumulated expenditures. 
And then we're going to multiply the weighted average accumulated expenditures times one or more interest rates in order to get the interest that we capitalize. Okay? Avoidable interest, we're going to call it. All right, so let's look at the interest rates. So this is something you might want to save. We're going to go through this in our example. This is how we decide which interest rate we're going to use. Okay? So if you have specific debt, meaning you borrowed the money for that construction project. Okay? So specific debt, it might not always say specific debt. It might say the company borrowed X amount of dollars in order to um, build a building. Um, so that's debt that you borrowed specifically for that project. So you look to see if you have enough specific debt to cover your weighted average accumulated expenditures. Because remember, the weighted average accumulated expenditures is kind of like our principal. So if you have enough specific debt, then you could just use the interest rate on your specific debt. Okay? So here, you just use the interest rate on your specific debt. If it's not enough, if the specific debt is not enough to cover your weighted average accumulated expenditures, then you look to see, is there other debt? So if there's other debt, then we have to see if there's more than one. So if there's not more than one, so if you have specific debt and then you have one other debt, you could just use that rate on the other debt. If you have a specific debt and you have more than one other debt, then you're going to have to calculate a weighted average interest rate. Now, I know this is very, very complicated. <laughs> it's probably confusing, but hold on, hold on. And let's take a look at our example. And when you see the example, it's going to make a lot more sense. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have for now. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to come back to um, the next uh, video, which is going to walk us through an example.